Hey, hey, this is meteorologist Darren Haar from ILSnow.com, September 18th, 10.31 p.m. And right here we're looking at the ENSO forecast. Right now we're kind of straddling the threshold for La Nina at negative 0.5 Celsius. But the ensemble clusters gradually rise up throughout the winter. Albeit on the cool side of neutral, but it should it technically will be a neutral uh, ENSO for this winter. So the nuts and bolts of this is that La Nina should not be a, any kind of a big factor this winter. Um, you can see uh, what I think this winter might bring in my winter 2016-17 outlook uh, part two. I cut that September 11th. My thoughts really haven't changed that much in a week. So if you want to go and take a look at that, uh, go right ahead. Right now we're going to take a look at what's going to happen the final days of uh, September here. I'm going to progress to the European, and um, right here you can see on uh, September 19th, this trough starts to dig into the northwest United States, and then it really cuts off into a significant storm moving across the northern Rockies, and that could bring a pretty decent uh, early season snow for the higher elevations of western Montana into Wyoming, and that's not really unusual for this time of year, so... It's not any kind of harbinger of my, what, uh, what might happen this winter. But the storm lifts up into Canada uh, by Monday. So the cold air from that storm never really makes it here. But uh, if I scroll back through, here's Saturday morning. Pretty sharp trough over eastern Canada. And that dives through here by Sunday. And uh, that could give us a, a sneaky cold morning here. Uh, temperatures well below normal Sunday morning. Could get some frost away from the lakes here in the Adirondacks. But um, these cold shots that drop down directly from Canada, they tend to be transient in nature. And you can see it uh, moving away here. And by Tuesday, it's it's a memory uh, getting pretty warm here again. And by Wednesday, the Europeans got a nice, uh, <laughs> a nice blowtorch blowing through here. Uh, pretty warm again. Um, the... GFS has a slightly different progression. It does show that storm coming, um, pretty healthy storm going through, uh, cutting down through the northern Rockies again, lifting up into Canada. But instead of just sitting here in central Canada, it kind of builds it into a really decent vortex into Hudson's Bay. And that results in the cool air, uh, another cold shock coming in here, uh, certainly much faster than what the Europeans said. I'm going to go, go back to the European. Look how warm it is uh, next Wednesday, the 28th. If you go back to the GFS, whoops, um, let's see. Um, yeah, a, a lot cooler than what the European is saying. And then um, by the end of the week, uh, September 30th, quite cold, or quite cold uh, relative to normal for this time of year anyway. And if you buy this, uh, temperatures would probably be um, hard-pressed to make it much above the low to mid-50s here in the Adirondacks, uh, September 30th. If you look at the European, uh, different story uh, by implication. So the ensembles do show a strong uh, correlation toward a cool shot the first weekend of October, so... Yeah, I certainly think we are going to have a cool shot to um, start October anyway. And uh, we'll see what happens from there. I do think that a zonal flow will be pretty common through much of October, so I don't expect the cool shot in October to start the month to be any kind of a harbinger of a cold October. I think the cold shots will tend to be transient under a zonal flow.